Uh, Chintan Mani, co-founder and vice chairman at Sun Mobility, is now joining us. Sir, can you help us understand how has the pandemic and the government initiative impacted the EV adopt uh, adoption so far? Thanks so much. Um, you know, the uh, pandemic has really shown people that uh, with lesser traffic and cleaner air, what that difference makes. And there is a general adoption, uh, people more interested to adopt to electric mobility on this area. Uh, we've seen this also largely at a lot of fleet, like fleet companies where almost all the large e-commerce players have made announcements that in the next three to five years, they would like to go 100% electric on their fleets because not just from a green point of view, but also give them economic viability on this area. And there's been a host of positive policies by the government related to charging infrastructure, the fact that batteries and vehicles can be separated, uh, related to the cost of energy that can be in, in different uh, jurisdictions, in addition to the fame policy that already existed. So this is also going to give a natural impetus to as we think of electric mobility going forward. Right. You know, company has uh, a unique adaptation of, ba uh, you know, battery swapping concept and smart mobility model. Can you help us understand the uh, our viewers about these concepts? Sure. So, you know, the challenge on electric vehicles is that there's the cost of electric vehicles is very high because the cost of battery. The second issue is this whole thing called range anxiety. If people are concerned, what if they run out of charge? Right. And the third area is long refueling time. It takes, you know, five to eight hours to charge an electric vehicle, even an hour maybe to fast charge it. But for a consumer who's, you know, used to refueling in five minutes, it seems like eternity. So the idea was if you separate the batteries from the vehicles, you can get vehicles to be electric vehicles to be similarly priced to internal combustion engine vehicles. And you get the cost of energy that a consumer pays to be priced equivalent or lower than gasoline. Uh, and by swapping batteries in one or two minutes, uh, you can actually address both the range anxiety and the long refueling time. So in, in virtual, you're doing battery as a service where consumers don't own the battery, they use it. They pay for what they use, like they use fuel, and it gives them a benefit at cost, range, all of these issues are resolved. They don't care about the battery anymore. And when technology gets upgraded in the future, they always have automatic access to that. So some mobility has created a solution of battery swapping using these smart batteries, our quick interchange stations where we swap them in, right? And um, a smart network that connects all of this together to give consumers a value proposition where they can go into swapping across two wheelers, three wheelers, load vehicles. So one format for all small uh, parts of all small form factors of vehicles. Okay, um, Chetan wanted to understand recently Bosch also acquired about a 26% stake in the company. How is this going to help uplift the business model knowing that Bosch has a good global reach as well? Yes, um, yeah, I think there's multiple areas. One, I think there has been a financial investment that helps us to be much stronger as we look at growth plans. But we're looking beyond that. Bosch also has a great network. Uh, it's known as a technology leader. And so we believe that the technology that we have created and what Bosch brings together can give us an even stronger uh, technology uh, uh, base uh, for the Indian market. And of course, uh, they're a global player. And so we look at the solution going global and we believe that this, uh, this partnership with Bosch can help accelerate uh, not just our domestic plans, but also our global plans. Okay. And, um you know, one of the big drawbacks that we see in the country is the lack of EV charging infrastructure. How are you addressing this concern? I think it's a very important point. So what we've done is uh, a couple of months ago, we announced uh, that we had partnered with Indian Oil Company. Uh, as you're aware, uh, IOCL has 30,000 outlets across the country. We've already set up our first 20 stations at different Indian oil outlets on this area. And we're probably adding another 10 stations in the next month or so as part of our initial pilot. The idea is that you need refueling to be similar to what consumers are used to, right? At the same level of convenience. So we believe this partnership with IOCL gives us that breadth on this area. In addition, we have many OEM partners, for example, 
uh, Piaggio is one of our OEM partners, and over 15 of their dealers have these stations under a franchisee model so that they can also put up um, and, and enable charging. And it's important to realize that each of our little stations the size of a ATM kiosk can do around 200 battery swaps a day. So it's almost replacing 100 charging stations uh, with one little device that does it. And so it can be very readily expanded at, at scale, which is what is very essential when you want to bring in uh, a network uh, for consumers. Right. Uh, you know, so when we just talk about the cost of EV, you know, the cost of running or running cost of EV is very, very low. But can you just talk about, you know, with the sort of progress that has happened in the, uh, you know, uh, electric vehicles. Uh, can you just talk to us about uh, how the cost of owning an EV is also coming down? Yeah, so there's, the, there's, if you think of owning of an of a electric vehicle, there's of course the purchase, the energy and the maintenance, right? So the purchase price, if it's with batteries, of course is higher, but then the cost per kilometer could be six or eight times less. If you use a business model of swapping, the vehicle price may be 10% less and the cost of energy may be 20% lower on this area. And then the maintenance would probably be around 40% less uh, because you don't have all these moving parts uh, or oil changes or filter changes that you typically have on a drum combustion engine. So over a five year period, you're probably thinking at least uh, overall 30% savings in your total cost of ownership, which can be quite significant for an end customer. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time for us. Always good to get perspective from you. On that note, we are taking a break, leaving you with Nifty up about 23-odd points, 11,246 for the Nifty.